What's up, folks? Welcome to the Real Estate Leadership Roundtable podcast. I'm Phil Duke Jr., and this podcast is specifically designed for those who are wanting to run and grow and scale their real estate team or their brokerage. Speaking of growing your real estate team, I just got done creating a totally free course on how to easily add three to five agents per month to your team or to your brokerage. There are no sales pitches. There is no coaching program to buy. There is no upsell inside there, just totally free content uh, that I've used to run and grow and scale my team. And we added 96 agents in the last 12 months uh, to my personal real estate team uh, across the country. Uh, To check out that course, just go to freedom-builders.net. Again, totally free real estate course, how to easily recruit three to five agents per month at freedom-builders.net. Looking forward to this great episode today. Let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, guys, here we go today. We're here live with John Papaloni, who uh, is a serial entrepreneur, um, had success with multiple businesses at this point in his career, um, currently the owner of Papaloni, uh, Papaloni Media. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about that and kind of the ups and downs of running that kind of business. Um, also helps coach, is, uh, has been uh, an agent running a team, uh, had a lot of success in a lot of different areas. John, thanks so much for hopping on here with us today. Absolute pleasure. Glad to be here. Hope I can provide a lot of value to your viewers. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. So kind of, um, you know, our, our viewers are are mainly people that are either broker owners already, team leaders already, or are thinking about it already. So can you kind of go back, uh, rewind the clock a little bit, take us back to you know, that moment when you decided real estate was the way you wanted to go. And then, you know, when, you know, doing a team, uh, you know, and, and starting to uh, back out of production was the way that you wanted to go. Can you kind of take us back to how that all got started with you? Oh, absolutely. I actually got into real estate by accident. And it's one of those things that actually started with my uh, dad and my mom and dad got sick. And uh, well, my mom first went into Alzheimer's, I had Alzheimer's, she went into a home. Then my, I ended up staying home with my dad and he, as he got sick a little after that. And then from there on, I had this wad of time where I didn't know what to do with myself. And it's like, I thought, you know what, now's the time to figure life out and not just do what I've been doing and just repeating the same things. So I said, you know what? Our family's been landlords. We were, I, I go to open houses just to look at houses just because I, I enjoyed it. I liked it. I didn't know what else to do with myself. And, you know, I thought, why not try to earn a living doing that? You know what I mean? Instead of doing it for free just to look around and maybe for some investment properties, do it where I can make money and go beyond that. So then I got my license while I was at home since I wasn't working anyways because I was home with my, my dad at the time. So I got my license. Then I became licensed. And that's where the journey began. And uh, yeah, I tell you, it's not what you think it is in the beginning. Uh, it's uh, like everyone thinks they're going to get in there and they're going to crush it the first year. And let's let's be honest, the majority of people, if you get one to two deals in your first year, bonus. You know what I mean? Like it's all about building brand and getting known. People in this business, people like to deal with people they know, like, and trust. And usually in the beginning, nobody knows you. So they can't like and trust you if they don't know you. And your sphere of influence usually as a general rule, tends to sit on the back seat and watch what you're doing before they decide whether or not they're going to take the leap of faith with you or deal with somebody more experienced. Yeah, man, that was so accurate. Yeah. Uh, the, my, my first six to 12 months were basically strangers. You know, it took a while before the people that, that already knew me, liked me and trusted me, saw me as a real estate professional. I and mean, they were just kind of like, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll see, you know, how he's going to do or not. So so with you getting in the real estate business, you had already had a marketing company uh, previously, correct? Correct. Yes. So how did that kind of help you? Uh, in what ways did that help you kind of segue um, into the business? Do you, do you feel like it gave you a leg up? As 100%. A how did you, how did you kind of use that to your advantage? Well, that's the thing, right? Things changed. Now, when I had my marketing business, that was back in the days from 2001 to two, about 2007. And with that being said, you know, things have changed because 2001 to 2007, I would say printing was the dominant factor in marketing. Web was around, but it was sort of just there. And even in the, you know, so once I sold that, I kind of saw the conversion. And one of the reasons I sold the business was because we were converting and I just did not want to. 
adapt and change the uh, business model because I had a, a working model. I was in the top 100, you know, in North America at the time. And I was very pleased with it and I had the right offer. But the lessons always stay with you. I mean, marketing, we call it marketing. Some people say what type of marketing you do. Sometimes the people, you know, confuse it with advertising. And, and the reality of it is, it, it's basically the attention business. And attention changes. So as long as you're able to follow the, the path of, of where the attention goes, the principles never really change. Like prime example, the whole concept of marketing is repetitive, repetitive, uh, what was the word I'm saying? Like basically, people have to see you repeatedly, constantly, yeah. consistently, day in, day out. And that, that, that repetitive message eventually sinks in. And social media is no different. Now, what has changed is, in my era with the print, you know, a simple 50% off, 25% off, $2 off coupon was enough to get the phones ringing. And mm -hmm. today, that message would just get you blocked, unfollowed, and discarded. So it goes back to why we're in real estate is relationships, right? And, and social media is the same thing. It's called social for a reason. And we're being social with people. And that's why when you deliver content and you deliver value in your content and you're delivering, you know, messages that will help other people, then they're going to pay attention to that. And you're just following that attention. And that's why it's important when people comment and like, don't just like their comment and just like their, the fact that they liked it and then just move on. Respond, start a conversation. That's what it's about. And when you start conversing, then they get to know you. And that's when they're building trust. And when they're building trust, you don't have to tell them you're a realtor because they're going to, if you're getting along with them and you're having a good conversation, they'll look you up. They're going to say, who is this guy? Then they're going to look at you and then they're going to see your realtor and they may not call you right away because, you know, it's not like they're sitting by the computer and saying, I need a realtor. Let's see who shows up on Instagram, right? Like it's yeah. what happens is they get to know you, like you and trust you. Then when they need something, next thing you know, they're reaching out to you. And, and it's usually a subtle message like, hey, you know, I was thinking, and that's usually how it starts. They weren't thinking. They've been thinking for a long time. They yeah. just decided to reach out today. Yeah. Right. So, and that's what it comes down to. So it's following the attention and adapting to the way people communicate today. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. You know, I've got a, I've got an agent that works on my team that he, he does that follow up on the comments method that you were talking about just then. I mean, he's just, he puts stuff out there all the time, you know, asking questions, asking, uh, you know, this or that, you know, kind of asking people which way they want to go. And he likes and he comments and he engages with every single comment that goes on there. And, and I've seen him do it like almost every day. Um, and he'll just, you know, people that comment on his stuff, he'll, he'll put funny, you know, uh, funny pictures underneath there to reply to them. Hey, I uh, hadn't seen you in a while. Let's go grab coffee. Uh, I mean, he's just really, really intentional about doing it. And uh, it's, it's just a big separating factor where we have just tons of agents posting about their latest sale or their latest listings. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think at some point we got to go a little bit deeper than, uh, than just, hey, I'm a, I'm a great agent. I'm making a lot of money. And and I'm really busy, and and I think that kind of marketing is to kind of starting to go away a little bit too. So. Right now, here I'm going to interject here. Now, this is my point. Right, we've gotten to the point that people have seen they're just listed, just sold so much that nobody gives a damn about it anymore. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying don't completely abandon it, but reality is, I don't post a just listed or a just sold more than once a month because just people have seen enough at it of it and they don't want to see it anymore and nobody cares and we're also on a downturn and in a recession so at this point in time people are just worried about how they're going to pay their bills they're not exactly worried about seeing how well you're doing so yeah. you know uh, and, and it, it just you know it, it, it's the quickest way to get you turned off you know yeah. but the reason i do it once a month because it kind of just reminds people that oh yeah yeah he's still he's in the business still and that's yeah. pretty much all i want to do is just remind you and then talk to you. Yeah. So just slowly sprinkling it in there, just just you know, jab, 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 right hook, basically. That's Gary, exactly it. Yeah. Gary V wrote a really, really good book about that. So what are some other things that you're seeing? Um, you know, just just in a crowded, you know, uh, marketing world right now. What are some other, you know, potential things that agents could do or that a team leader or a broker owner could kind of do to really uh, make themselves stand, stand out in a little bit of a crowded world right now. What are some things that you're seeing and some things that you're coaching some people on right now? 
Well, here's the thing. The one thing you want to focus on is being of service. Right, it's it's one of those things that everyone talks about. It don't talk about your awards. Now I'll give you an example. Like when you meet someone and you're out there, you're not. You know, I'm not going to go turn around and say, "Hey, Phil, I'm John. I'm a uh, top agent, number one in Canada, number one in Ontario, number one whatever. I've got 20 people on my team. I do 200 sales a year. I, I'm the king of the crop. And uh, how are you doing? Nobody does that. So why does your advertising do that? Right? Like it, it's just. People want to know each other. They want to get to know each other, go out and make relationships. Right now, like I said, people are scared. They don't know what's going on. So why not create community events where people can have that moment to interact with each other, share information with each other, learn more about the communities they're in, participate in the communities, so then they can feel like they're a part of that community and they're not alone. Now, when you have that interaction, people kind of forget where they're at and forget their worries, and they just get to know each other. Now, prime example, we had uh, Canada, like I live in Canada, and we had Canada Day on July 1st, which is equivalent to your, your the, the 4th of July in, in America. So someone I know put together a family event at a local park, full of rides, full of games, full of things, all towards families, had barbecue, got sponsors for that. You know what? It's no surprise that that person does 300 transactions a year in the local community because yeah. he supports that community. And if people see you supporting them in their bad times, they're going to be there with you in their good times as well. Yeah. I love that, man. Yeah. I mean, it's never been easier ever in the history of the world to become that local real estate celebrity. The, 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 the online mayor of whatever town, whatever market you're working in. And I just, I see so many people just missing the boat on that. Uh, I mean, you know, Facebook groups that are specific to your local area or your markets, your, your yes. neighborhood you're wanting to be in, uh, you know, hobbies that you're into, you know, whether you're into, uh, you know, a fitness or I've got a friend that's crushing it with uh, him and his wife just go, uh, they hike and every weekend they put on some kind of hike somewhere in their area and this is where we're going to meet up and what time and, and they just, they create relationships that way with other people who are who are also wanting to get into that. And uh, I think more than ever, uh, you know, people can kind of spot a phony and can kind of spot a fake. And I think just so many of the, of our customers uh, are not as concerned with how many transactions you did, how many admins you have on your team, how many closings you've had, you know, they want to know about you, you know, uh, you know, and connect with you on a more personal level, which kind of ties back into that whole social aspect of social media. So, Right. So, and it's, yeah, I love it, it's man. Exactly. So, so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, kind of where you're at in the business today. I know you've got some big plans uh, of, of, of getting closer. And I know you're, you're working towards there of getting, getting closer to exiting from production completely. Um, just having the, the, the members of your team handling your buyers, handling your sellers. Like what is the next big thing for you? Well, that's exactly it right now. I am focusing on my media company. I am still obviously not giving up on the real estate part, but I'm, uh, what I'm doing is I'm like prime example. My whole intent is to never show another house, you know, by the end of the year, I would have been inside the last house unless it's for my own purchase. And the idea there is to train people, coach people. And that's how I build also my coaching platform. I coach my own people. And that's the whole intent. So when I get that, I coach them, teach people how to generate leads, nurture leads, and then build that strength of that team and, and show how we're united together. And then again, have the team, have buyers agents to go out there and show homes. And yeah. the focus is there. Now, obviously the buck stops at me because I'm the, uh, you know, the owner. I'm the owner of the business. For all intents and purposes, we all have our businesses. I don't look at, like when I work with a team, I don't look at each team member as, a, as part of my business. I look at them as individuals who have their own business who are here supporting mine. Yeah, And that's the way I look at it. And I encourage people to do that. And, and that's the thing, right? Like I think of things differently than most people because most traditional brokerages have your brokerage, you have your team, and then the team has their team members, and, and there's a whole bunch of divides in that. I look at that and say, that's usually not a way of building loyalty. Because what ends up happening is, let's be honest, the brokerage stakes are split, which is usually anywhere between 10 and 30%, depending on your brokerage. And then the team has, you know, you have your team leader that takes 50%. 
right? Usually on average, some take 60, some take 40, but we'll go by average. So what ends up happening there is at the end of the day, what ends up happening is that that agent who's on that team has pretty much lost 60% of their salary. And that's fine and dandy when the leads are passed to them. But most times when you're on a new team or when you join a team and you're new, you're not getting the leads. You're, you're there to prove yourself and prove that you're willing to work. They're not just handing it to you. In fact, most teams don't hand out a lead to you for the first 90 days because they want to make sure you'll follow the system. So we're, here's where my difference is. I don't look at it and say, other than my admins, I don't build up a team anymore, like where you're on my actual team. You run your business. And the reason the lack of loyalty is just say, I'm working with you on a team. And now you get your aunt is selling her house. Now, what's going to end up happening is if that happens once or twice, you'll let it slide. But it'll come the third time that you have your family member or friend that is selling and you're splitting the commission with me, you're going to start resenting it. So now you're looking at the door trying to find an exit plan. Now everyone says, no, no, I'm here to learn. I'm here to whatever. Mark my words, three, three sales down the road where that's happened, you're starting to resent it. You're trying to exit. And that's why I find a lot of teams don't last. Now, where my perspective is, I got a group of people I work with. You run your business. I run my business. Now, the clients I have are my clients. I'll send them to you to work as my buyer's agent for that deal. And now this doesn't matter what brokerage you're with. And it doesn't matter if you change brokerage. We have a contract with each other. Where as long as you're dealing with that client, we'll have a 50-50 split. Whatever you do yourself is your business, you run it whatever way you want. My systems apply to the clients I give you. Your system applies to the clients you give you. Yeah, I mean, you give yourself. And that's how I kind of started working out now. And I think that's a lot better because now there's no resentment there. And at the same time, I keep my clientele and I keep the money coming in flowing from my clientele. And it doesn't matter what brokerage they're with. Our contract is uh, binding regardless of the brokerage, so it kind of works. Yeah, a whole lot more scalable too, right? I mean, that's kind of the big conversation I think going on right now is, uh, you know, really how scalable can your model be? If, if you can only run it locally, if you can only run it up to a certain amount, you know, it's probably going to be something you're going to have to make a change to eventually. But I think you're starting to see more and more models where it's more agent friendly. The agent doing the deal is keeping more of the money. Uh, it's a little bit more hands off, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, on the flip side, though, it's more scalable and you can actually take on more agents when you have a setup like that. So uh, I like exactly. I, I like your setup there. And I think, the, you know, people are looking right now for models they can scale. The reality of it is if if the business does keep trending down the way it is right now, we're going to have a lot of the. Uh, you know, beginner type, you know, um, you know, bottom third, even some of the middle third agents getting out of the business. And so these are things that we all need to be thinking about as we're looking at our, at our models and building them out. So, um, so yeah, man, I love it, John. If somebody has some questions about um, coaching with you, um, getting involved with your, with your media company, anything like that, what is the best way for them to reach out to you personally? You can reach out to me on my email at john at papalloniteam.com or uh, even John at papalonimedia.com, both come to me. Okay. Um, or you can even find me on Instagram following my name, John Papaloni. Okay. And just for those that are listening to this that may not be watching it, that's P-A-P-A-L-O-N-I for Papaloni. So, John, thanks so much for your time today. We'll be, we'll be putting all those contact links down in the description below so that folks can just click it right there. Thanks so much for hopping on here, man. Look forward to doing Absolute this pleasure. in the near future, man. For sure. Thanks so much. All right. Talk to you soon.